and any um, allegation of wrongdoing of any sort has to be governed by that and, you, and the plaintiff doesn't have recourse to the courts. If that's true, then the sooner you withdraw a lawsuit, the cheaper it is, and that seems to be what he's done. But again, I'm not an expert on that kind of law. Would there be any advantage to having a scene such as this play out before the public with the Toronto City Police, all, you know, four or five of them in jackets surrounding him, escorting him out through the media melee? Well, um, it can attract some sympathy, you know, if, if, if it's a close call as to whether um, Mr. Gomeshi is guilty or not, at the end of the day, when you analyze the evidence, the fact that he's been put through this can uh, inure to his benefit in the eyes of the, of the triers or in the eyes of the public. I, I don't know how that's going to play out, but, you know, what's happening to him here and the fact that the world is seeing it may have some impact on people's view of his guilt or innocence. I mean, now people are going to be looking at everything concerning him and deciding how it ties into whether they believe he committed these offenses or not. How would you go about defending a case like this? Well, let, let's factor out the fact that Mr. Gomeshi is a public figure. Mm. This is a criminal case uh, like any other. It's about gathering all the information from the prosecutor. I want to see what the complainants have said. I want to see what they've said to others. I want to examine what other evidence the prosecution intends to offer that they say corroborates the allegations that these women have made. I want to know if these women have spoken to each other or did speak to each other about uh, their dealings with Mr. Gomeshi before they came forward, either to the press or to the police. Because if their allegations are similar, I'm looking for evidence of some collusion on their part, either conscious collusion or some form of contamination that may have colored their um, uh, their uh, their story. So, I, something, so, so if they, if if women who brought allegations such as this uh, talk to each other online or you know talk to each other at all and said, yeah, that happened to me too, and they talk, shared their experience, that could be used against them. I don't like to put it that way, used against them. It can be used to demonstrate to the judge or the jury that these complaints are not independent of each other. The strength of the prosecution in cases where several complainants all give similar stories about how they were the subject of, a, of sexual assault by the accused that's powerful evidence. The similarity is powerful because, you know, the jury says, well, the, the, that, that yeah, belies coincidence. Right. What is the chance that the... But if they spoke to each other, if they knew each other, if they compared notes, it, it's, it, what, these things sometimes happen consciously, sometimes it happens unconsciously, that stories get molded to some extent um, by what the complainant has heard others have said. And yes, the defense lawyer is looking for things like that because those things are important in showing the, the, the judge or the jury uh, that the complaints may not be true.